Um, my name is Qin. Yeah, so I think this is my third talk in Kaudra. So I work on the GCC security feature improvement for the Linux kernel for several years. Yeah, this is uh, this talk basically is an update uh, for the last year's plan, which we yeah we describe in the last year's Kaudra slide. So some of the concept. My, I, I didn't list here, so if you have question, any question on some of the concept, just let me know, yeah. Okay, so, oh, how to page, page down? Um, David? So I cannot use the, uh, sorry. Is it? Yeah. Hey, now you can. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So in yeah, the outline today is the first uh, status update for last year. Then give some more detail on several interesting item work on for this year, and then yeah, to do list for the next year. Yeah. So in this table, there are several. Uh, new security features I added or will, uh, will add it very soon for the Linux kernel into GCC. So most of them relate to the flexible array member uh, to uh, the array out of bound issue for flexible array member. So most of them already finished and under or under review. Uh, the last one is some uh, improvement for the diagnostic. Uh, so I, I have uh, some, some slides in the later for more details. So yeah, so if you want to get more information, yeah, of these items can go to the uh, last year's call on slides, at least in the bottom. So yeah, so let's start the status update. The first item is the flexible array member related features. So for, from last year, we have three items and I think we finish all of them, yeah. So the first one is the, uh, to accept a structure with flexible array embed, uh, nested into another structure. We accept it as a GCC extension in GCC 14. Um, so the second one is uh, accepted the flexible array member in union. Previously, we didn't accept it as in union, but the Linux kernel has a strong request here, try to accept it in union. So we improved the GCC to accept this ex extension in GCC 14. And then the next big item is add a new attribute uh, for flexible array member. Uh, because flexible array member has issues, this, in the IR, you, in the language, you don't have any information on how, how many number of the element of that array. So it's very difficult to uh, catch the out of bound error uh, by the tools. So one important improvement is add the size of the array into the IR. So as we discussed, we decide the first add a new attribute counted by uh, to the flexible array member. So we already finished it and added this a new attribute into GCC 15. And uh, this attribute also is already used by Linux kernel in many, yeah, in their uh, source code. So you can see the, um, the reference in the bottom. Yeah, there are a lot of usage in the Linux, Linux kernel right now. And uh, they catch real, real bug already, yeah. So yeah, during the adoption of the counted by into Linux kernel, they have a new request to uh, request the GCC and the clown to add a new built-in uh, 
uh, built-in counted by reference to ease their adoption of this new uh, counted by. So I will uh, talk a little bit in, in more detail in the later slides for this new item. There are two old items we are trying to work on, but due to the lower priority, so I haven't started uh, yet because the Linux kernel currently don't need, need them. Yeah. So, yeah, so for the flexible array member task, we finish, uh, I think, uh, uh, almost all the issues. Yeah. So the next item, yeah, f f from last year is try to reduce the false, false positive for array bound warning. Yeah, there's one, one bug filed by Linux kernel which uh, inhibit them from turn on the uh, array bound warning by default. So we have a long discussion with Linux kernel folks and finally, I convinced them that's not a GCC bug. Actually, it's a real array out of bound warning in Linux kernel source code. So they try to fix, fix them in the Linux uh, kernel. But it looks like it's not an easy task, uh, even in this kernel to fix this uh, 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 real bug. So, but uh, during the discussing on this issue, we, we, not, we noticed that GCC has some general issue, general improvement is needed in this area to improve the GCC's diagnostic uh, message to provide the user more information on why this kind of warning uh, happened. And uh, yeah, so we have some improvement in this area and I have a implementation ready, yeah, under review. So the third item is uh, try to improve the integer overflow detection. Yeah, last year, we, after discussing, we identified these three items. The first one is try to add a new option uh, and sign the integer overflow sanitizer. Yeah, and the second item is uh, try to make the signed integer overflow working with the wraparound uh, uh, behavior. Yeah, and uh, the third item is try to add a new attribute. Uh, to for specific function to control the gra granularity of the yeah so there are some uh, requirement request request from the Linux kernel uh, but within this year we don't have any progress in GCC because. Uh, uh, the KSPP project decides to uh, waiting for the experiment between the clan and the Linux kernel because there has some special requirement from the Linux kernel. I will explain a little bit later in a later slide. So, uh, so we think maybe it's better to do the experiment first in the clan, and then if it's successful, then we GCC will catch up. Yeah, in this area. Uh, yeah, so this is a slide to ex yeah, describe Clown actually made a very good progress in the integer overflow detection area. They provide both sanitizer for signed integer overflow and uh, assigned integer overflow. It's already available. I believe it's in Clown 18 or 19. And the second, uh, they support the signed integer overflow combined with uh, wrap around. So that's in clone 19 already. And uh, the wrap attribute I just mentioned, uh, that one is under review right now. It's not a uh, check in. Uh, they, yeah, actually during the, their study, the kernel guys study, they need some EDM exclusion uh, in the compiler, try to help the adoption. Yeah, yeah. Linux kernel has a, I think Linux kernel, they have some source code uh, try to uh, do the 
entity overflow detection by themselves in the source code or around the source code. So they call them EDM, EDMs. So if the, if the compiler entity overflow detection combined with their source code entity overflow detection together, that will be, have a lot of issue. So Linux kernel don't want to eliminate their available idioms for the overflow detection code. So then I think this part is very tricky. So that's the part I really don't know whether compiler should add them or not. So currently, Clang, yeah, in Clang, they already finish this three idiom exclusion uh, and uh, already put back into Clang. So, I will see how these four items combine together, whether they can eliminate the integer overflow detection, integer overflow box class uh, completely. If they can, maybe, yeah, even if it's tricky, maybe GTC still need to consider this. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. So, any question so far? Yeah, just one question. So I remember it was a few months ago, there was this interaction on the mailing list with the kernel people. Mm. And Linus was very much against tagging various functions as requiring these semantics. What's happening with that now? Because the whole thing, you know, this is so kernel specific, right? Mm. Because I really, I re you know, we already have sometimes people file these bugs with these non-default sanitizer options. Mm. And I'm worried that people might end up, you know, writing these things and then complaining that their specific idiom isn't supported. And I, I don't know, it just feels like there's going to be a bit. Yeah, actually, I think this is a common issue. Yeah, not only for the integer overflow, I think for the array out of bound, they also have the same issue. They have the, Linux kernel have the source code uh, catch the area out of bound themselves because they know the source code better than compiler. So they add those kind of checking uh, in the source code. Then later, if they try to use the GCC or Clans uh, tool catch the integer overflow or array out of bound overflow, then there are some mismatch confliction be because they have the source code handling, but the GCC and the compiler can catch it. So, yeah, so this part, I, I communicated with the kernel people a lot, but it looks like uh, convince kernel people to um, change their code is very, very difficult. I, I, I know Linux, Linux, so the, the Linux, the kernel, the Linux kernel founder, he pushed back this kind of elimination, yeah, very strongly. So, yeah, so I don't know, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I try to convince them, I try to convince them, yeah, that's, your source code need to be changed, but it looks like it's not an easy task. Yeah, it's not an easy task. So, so that uh, we all, I just uh, watch, yeah, the, whether the clown experiment in Linux kernel can be successful or not. If it can be successful, then give me, give, give us some motivation to do it. Uh, same thing in GCC, yeah. So, yeah, so that's the update for the last year. Uh, so I'll give some more detail on several interesting items. The first uh, item is uh, uh, counted by attribute uh, for the flexible array implementation in the GCC 15. The second one is a new request from Linux kernel. It's called a new built-in, built-in built counted by reference, yeah. So the last one is, yeah, some detail on the diagnostic improvement uh, to provide more hints uh, uh, about the compiler's duplication on the uh, compiler warning message. So the first item is the counted by attribute. So let's go over the, what's, yeah, the current design of the counted by attribute. So for this, 
structure with the flexible array as the last uh, field, the buffer, yeah, we, we add a new attribute counted by, uh, can I, no. So the number of the, yeah, previously the buffer plus flexible array um, buffer don't know its size, but with this new attribute, we know its size will be specified by the another field in the same structure, that's a size field. So this size field, yeah, must have an integer type, and uh, if it's a negative value, then treat it as zero. Yeah, in the beginning, we only accept the positive value, but uh, later, Linux kernel uh, request, uh, uh, we handle the negative value because sometimes they use the negative value as the error code. So, but uh, zero and the positive value will be treated as a, uh, as a size. So they, they can yeah, reflect in their code to, to eliminate this requirement, but yeah, we, yeah, handling it in GCC is not uh, hard, so I handle it. Uh, to treat it as a negative value as a zero. And uh, then we have two requirements. Yeah, so that's the requirements for the pair of the two objects. So with the new attribute, so there are two objects for one, uh, for one structure object. So the first object is a flexible array object and the other object is a size object. So these two objects must meet two requirements. The first requirement is the, the size object must be initialized before the first reference to the uh, flexible array object. And the second one is the flexible array object must have at least the number of the size object number available all the time. So these two requirement is uh, a requirement uh, to try to make the behavior uh, defined uh, for the users of the size object. If this one of the, of the, the, the requirement cannot be met, then the behavior of the uh, consumers of the counted by. So there are several consumer of the counted by attributes. For example, the bound uh, sanitizer or the dynamic object size. Uh, their behavior will be undefined. So this uh, summary of the counted by attribute, and this this is an important feature of the counted by um, attribute. So this feature is also requ uh, requested uh, uh, by the Linux kernel. Uh, so the reference to the flexible array member field use the latest value assigned to the counted by field. So in this example, there are two reference, reference one and reference two. So the size is assigned, yeah before the reference to, to it. So the, every reference uh, just uh, use the latest size assigned to it. So this feature is uh, used by the, the Linux kernel has a, a pattern try to dynamically uh, extend their array, flexible array. So this is for that purpose, yeah. So, yeah. Could this counted by attribute be eventually applied to uh, function arguments? That's a function receive a length and a pointer to actually array elements. Yeah, that's that the next step. Yeah, yeah, I will talk, talk about it a little bit, yeah. So during the implementation, we, yeah, we have, uh, so I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, for function arguments, you already have uh, attribute access, yeah. which 
pretty much does what you want. Yeah, I also explain it in the, next, in the slides later about the relationship between the counted by uh, and the access and a local size attribute, yeah. So yeah, we have uh, no, we, we, we observe an uh, issue. Yeah, so the current uh, IR in GCC cannot express the implicit reading of the site information uh, in the yeah, consumer. Yeah, in the line nine, you can see the built-in dynamic object size, actually when compute the object size for the uh, object buffer that, that reference, it will try to read the object size information. But that info, that reading, in, implicit reading, didn't represent it in the IR. So if it cannot be repre represented in the IR, the optimization, comparator optimization might apply different optimization, reorder them or hoist them. Uh, yeah, so then the wrong transformation might happen. So this is a major issue uh, during the implementation. So in order to resolve that, uh, that problem, we have a lot of discussion and finally decide to introduce a new uh, internal function to carry the size information in the IR uh, to the a flexible array object. Then with this internal function, the size information is ex explicitly represented in the IR. So the data dependence is uh, preserved in the IR, then no wrong transformation can happen. So yeah, so this is some detail about the new internal function. It will, the second argument is the size, reference to the size. And the first one is a reference to the original object. And the last four uh, parameters is other information needed for the, uh, the size reference. Yeah, so I will not explain in more, deta in more details. <laughs> This is presumably in Gimple, not in RTL or any other later stage? Not RTL, this Jimbo level. Ah, right. Jimbo level, yeah. So this internal function actually is a pew and it's a leaf and a non throw. Yeah, so that's a feature. And uh, it, it returns the first argument, the reference to the object, same as the first argument, yeah. So this is the internal function we try to add it to resolve that issue. So then this, this explain how this internal function resolves the missing uh, reading issue. Yeah, so for every uh, reference to the flexible array object, in C front end, we will replace every reference to the flexible array member with the, new, with the call to this new internal function. And in this new internal function, the um, size information will be encoded over there. So the explicit uh, uh, data dependence is encoded in the IR. Yeah, so. Then, then in every consumer of the size information, for example, the bound sanitizer or the uh, dynamic object size, uh, they will query the size of the uh, buffer from the arguments of the internal function. The second, I think it's uh, the, the second uh, argument is the size, yeah. And, and after the size information is uh, useless anymore, that's, oh, yeah, most uh, situation is in after the uh, Jimpo state, after the middle end in the ex expand phase, we will replace every call to this internal function back to the original reference to the object. Yeah, so that's the basic uh, design of this uh, new new counted by attribute. So the status is we already committed into GCC 15 on this May. 
and uh, the remaining task is, yeah, there's two remaining tasks. In last year, we, we plan to use this information to improve the dynamic object size to uh, calculate the whole object size for structure with flexible array member. Uh, and the second item is issue warnings. If the requirement, uh, we mentioned previously, the requirement is broken in the user source code. Yeah, we try to implement these two items, but uh, due to the other things, so these two giving lower priority, so I haven't studied them yet, yeah. So the item have higher priority as this one. Actually, this a new requirement from the Linux kernel uh, to add a new built-in uh, for their purpose, because during the adoption of the new attribute, uh, they met this problem. Yeah, so this slide uh, explain what kind of problem the Linux kernel have during the uh, adoption. So, from the, the structure A, yeah, the a structure with the counted by the left side, yeah, so before the counted by attribute is added, the Linux kernel has a macro allocator, object allocator, as I uh, explained on the right side, uh, without the, the size information for the flexible array. Yeah, so, yeah, it just alloc the size and then assign to the pointer. So that's uh, the current allocator in Linux kernel. So when they try to add the counted by attribute in the source code, then the, the major issue is after each allocation, yeah, when they call, every time they call the macro, they have to add uh, uh, open coded the initialization after the allocation. So that that's, uh, seems, yeah, seems only one or two is okay, but uh, there are a lot of plays uh, in the Linux kernel called this macro. So add them every, every place seems not, yeah, it's too tedious and uh, error prone work. So they request this new built-in to uh, help their adoption. So the built-in is very simple. Yeah, just uh, giving a flexible array, uh, please return the corresponding uh, counter field for me. Yeah, so giving, if this built-in uh, available, then they can just uh, change the macro, the allocator macro uh, in one place and then yeah, so I think the motivation is very yeah, clear here, so I think it's very reasonable to support this request. So, yeah, so after a lot of discussing, we finally decide this interface. So for this built-in, we will try to return a pointer to the corresponding size object if this uh, flexible array have a size object associated with it through the counted by attribute. If there, there are no such uh, size object existing, then returns a void pointer, non-pointer. So the type of the void is also decide after a lot of discussing. Yeah, in the beginning, I tried to use the size t pointer, but uh, later, after discussing, we decide on the void pointer, void, uh, yeah, void pointer, non-pointer, to help them you try to use the generic, yeah. So with this new built-in counted by, uh, new built-in, the previous, object allocator can be adapted with two more lines. Yeah, so we, we can use the generic to choose the, uh, what have the type returned by the uh, built-in counted by. If it's returned a uh, void pointer, then do nothing. If it's returned the other uh, size of the uh, other uh, pointer, then we will assign the the, the counted by field 
So by, by this uh, simple two lines, the, we can resolve the issue for the uh, Linux kernel adoption. Yeah. Just being an idiot here, I guess the advantage of that over just, ch over just having a conditional is that that's completely compile time. I, I guess the advantage of that of just having a conditional is that this is completely compile time. In the compile and time, and yeah, in the front end. There's no conditionals at all at runtime, it just knows automatically how to assign the count. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's completely yeah, evaluated during the front end. Yeah. Mm. Any more question? Mm? Do you have the sign in to know? Generic. Okay, I, I believe. Okay, I will believe you that that, that works. I will, yeah, I've worried that there's an assignment to null, um, but um, I, I, I. Yeah, move actually, on, move on. this code is provided to me by Martin Yuker. Yeah, she is very familiar with this coding, so. Yeah, personally, yeah, I, I, I have to uh, yeah, admit uh, <laughs> no, There's no assignment to null in that. Uh, you read that as if this is a void star, then assign, uh, 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 then assign to, this, to, uh, 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 to the address of this, of this literal zero, which is just allocated there. It's not a null. Um, so it's, a, it's assigned, assigned it to a temporary and throws the temporary away. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's compiled well. Yeah, it's compiled well. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> you just used if built-in counted by ref equals uh, is is non-zero, then then assign it. Then it would be a uh, yeah uh, illegal code because you would still assign e uh, zero code to 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 the void point void. <laughs> Yeah, I think the programming, the source level programming model actually we discussed for quite some long time. Even till now, I think the, yeah, my, myself cannot fully understand uh, this uh, coding here. It's, yeah, Martin Yuker provided this coding to me, yeah. So I think, yeah, uh, in my testing case, it's working very well. Yeah, so I think this is the right approach to do it, yeah. So the status of this building, yeah, actually, yeah, I already submit uh, se several versions of the patch. So I think the first patch, yeah, after first patch, we have a lot of discussing. So uh, I think all the issues were already resolved. So yeah, I just sent out the fifth version before the conference, and I waiting for the approval. So hopefully, it can be approved very soon. <laughs> When does built-in counted by ref get lowered to uh, or converted into? Because it'll be converted into something. Um, it's in front end. I, I in actually, C front end, it's just a pa the C parser just uh, saw this built-in, and then it will decide. Uh, mm. uh, it will check whether it has counted by. If it has counted by, then just return yes. uh, uh, that field, the counted by field, uh, to replace this this uh, this uh, built-in. If there's no counted by, just return a non. Mm. So it happens non very early in the front. Well, yeah, very front early. End, very early. End, just as uh, yes, handled in a C C parser. Uh, right now, it's, it's it's a keyword in the front end. Yeah, keyword. It's it's not a normal built-in. It could actually be an overloaded built-in, like we have atomics and, and various mm. others. But the thing is, it can be normal built-in because its return type depends on, uh, and in this case, not even on the arguments, but on on the actual counted by attribute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. So yeah, we we are done with uh, flexible array. So now we are, yeah, this item we I yeah 
this item is we try to improve the diagnostic to provide more hints on the compiler code duplication. So it's, yeah, hopefully I can explain this a little bit clear with this simple example. So this example, you just uh, notice, yeah, there's uh, two, two, two cosines assign, assign in the, the, the second, uh, second uh, routine. So that two cosines will be aligned and then some optimization will be applied. Then those, the optimization called jump threading. So that jump threading will duplicate code. That duplication, uh, yeah, introduce the uh, warning. Yeah, actually, if we compile this small example, yeah, with the uh, latest GCC, you can see a strange warning uh, for the line 13. Yeah, line 13. So the user will be very confused. Where is the warning come from? Yeah, actually after we study, this is a real bug. This is a real bug. It's do, it's do catch the, 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 the source code has an issue because when the line five, if when the line five, you know, this one, is evaluate, then the index will be larger than four, and then the, it will warn, but if it warn and ex exit, then there's no issue. But it, it is only one, but still continue the ex execution. So if it's the index already bigger than four, you want it, but you still continue reference the array, then that's out of bound, right? It's, so it's the compiler catch the real bug for the out of bound, but it's very confusing to the end user. In this, sorry. Oh. Yeah, so hopefully, Hopefully, yeah, this slide will try to explain a little bit why this compiler do this duplication and how this uh, uh, only introduced. So on the left side, yeah, you can note, note, yeah, please focus on basic block four. Basic block four, you can see from basic block two, there are two go to. The first is an index bigger than three. The else is uh, index smaller than three. So both of the branch, they go to uh, block, basic block four. So on basic block four, the index could be smaller than three or bigger than three. So it's not known. Then the reference to the uh, array will be, yeah because compiler don't know, so it cannot issue any warning there. But on the right side, after the compiler optimization, the, it, uh, the, the duplication, the code duplication will be applied. And uh, then the basic block three, you can see the index will be larger than three. So on the basic block three, all the, yeah, it will, the index will larger than three, and the basic block four, the index will be smaller, the smaller than three. So the reference, the red one, I emphasize the red one, that reference inside the basic block three, the index will be larger than, than three. So the compiler, yeah, actually can issue the warning, definite warning, it's out of bound. So that's a real warning, but, um, currently, we didn't provide more information to help the user understand why this warning comes from. Yeah. So, in order to provide more information to the user, we we try to add a new option, diagnostic explain harder, and uh, to for this purpose, to provide more information in a warning mes message to report when, where such index value come from. So this is a, yeah, a report, the warning message with my current patch. And from this warning message, you can see very clearly the compiler report uh, 
under what kind of situation, under the event one, the when the condition evolved to, to four, to two, then this uh, array out of bound will happen. So then the user will come back to look at their code to see the line five, yeah, has this, then it will help them to identify where their source code have issue. So here, yeah, thanks a lot for David's help, yeah. So I, yeah, the, the patch, yeah, the implementation is actually is simple. We just add a new data structure, copy history in the middle end. And this data structure try to record the uh, condition and transformation uh, for the code duplication. Whenever code is duplicated due to different transformation, we'll record them into this data structure. And uh, during the array out of bound checking or other warning checking, uh, the, the warning checker will query this data structure and use it to form a sequence of uh, diagnostic events to report the path of the warning message. So I think this should be a very nice improvement in general to the uh, GCC, and uh, not only in the jump threading, I think other loop transformation, those, yeah, uh, duplication transformation can also all be extended to add uh, this one. But this, this is uh, under approval, so Richard is not here. Richard, no. <laughs> Richard Bernie. So, so I was going to ask why is this feature hidden behind the flag? Is it just because it's experimental or? What, what, what's your picture? The, the diagnostic try harder. Uh, it seems like as a user, I won't know that flag, so I won't benefit from it. So why is it not just enabled by default, uh, better uh, diagnostics? You, 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 you think it's better to be on by default? It's a question. Yeah, yeah I hope so. I hope so, but the first step, we will try to yeah, keep the default behavior first. Yeah, then later, if it's really helpful, we will turn on it by default. Yeah, Jack. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, the warning is actually correct or uh, not false positive or false positive mm. really depends on what the code is, is doing. The yeah. thing is, uh, yeah, that's basically the main design issue with the Midland warning is that they run well, very late and mm. therefore they, are, um, they do want to be dependent on the optimizations, but the optimizations are actually not done to make, make warnings better. Yeah, uh, actually I agree, and, yeah. And so, so they run into problems with the, uh, with the optimizations and often the, more, the better uh, the optimizations are, mm. the, the worse the false positives are. Yes, and yes that's true. In this case, uh, even the extra diagnostics, uh, whether it's useful to, to the user or not, depends on if actually the user wrote it that way in the source. Mm. And yeah. that might not be the case. Uh, you, you have different uh, situations. Either the user, for instance, knows that the index can be higher than that and put the if uh, conditional in there. Mm. Uh, and expects that the, the index above that will, will be higher. And in that case, the warning is, is good. Mm. But it could be just that you, you use some inline function written by someone else and that someone else is just trying to be extra cautious and, and uh, tries to protect something against uh, some problem mm. and, and just uses some conditional somewhere and it doesn't relate to the caller at all. And in that case, the jump threading will work again and will do the same thing. And in that case, it will just confuse the user because it, it points out something that really isn't in the source. And it's the thing about the middle end warning is that they often don't use um, use the VRP information uh, yeah. on the range. Mm. In this case, it's not there. There is just jump threading, which which turns this this code is 
condition under um, yeah so jump this condition. The but, but generally uh, mm. how the middle end warnings and the late warnings okay. uh, use the VRP is if you don't know anything about uh, some some value it's mm. it's varying then you don't warn because you would warn all the time and if you know that uh, the value is not a single even uh, value so so you have somewhere some check that checks it's not 42 okay. then you suddenly assume that it's possible that all the other values will appear there and that might not be true and in that case you warn and often that's false positives so the question is whether to do anything about this at all because it's, it's hard to find out if, if the check which which the jump threading is done on is coming actually from the source or from some something some optimizations uh, yeah. found out. If it's come from the source, yeah, we also can mark whether it's if the duplicate, uh, yeah, then we can mark which one is originally, which one is copy, right? So the copied one will have. Yeah, we, we, we can check later, this is copied, then it might be a false positive or those kind of thing. Yeah. We can mark it. Uh, two uh, questions or observations. Firstly, am I right in thinking the explain harder flag uh, is a way of avoiding paying the costs of building this data structure and storing it in terms of compile time and compile memory. Mm. It's, it's an opt sounds like it's an optimization. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if you've measured the costs and if, it, if it's true. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah not yet. Yeah. yeah. The other yeah. thing, one, uh, and in terms of the discoverability of the feature, mm. if, if it's turned off, but if it had been on, we could have done it. You couldn't, we could issue a note saying, note, recompile with dash F explain harder to get more information, uh, and that would that would let the user easily discover the, the feature. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, this, the second, if I'm <laughs> familiar, this. I, I think maybe, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, because I have, still have a lot of slides, go so if more yeah. questions relate to this item, can we postpone to after the meeting? After the meeting, <laughs> I still have uh, some slides. After the slides, okay, yeah, sorry. Mm. So, yeah, so this is the implementation for this one. Yeah, hopeful, yeah, it's very simple, I think. Yeah, so current status is, yeah, so maybe more discussing, yeah, maybe more discussing on this. So this is a to-do list for the next year. So also three items. The first one is yeah some what, what yeah the some per, yeah just ask yeah whether yeah we will extend the counted by to general pointers. That's the first item. Then we'll try to re-implement the attribute, the available attribute access alloc size with the new internal function. That's yeah one of our goal. And uh, also the arithmetic overflow uh, detection improvement. And the last item is the KCFI, yeah. So, yeah, for, for the motivation of, yeah, we will, all the array, yeah, we can classify into two, fixed size and dynamic size. So dynamic size has variable length array, flexible array member, and the pointer, general pointer. And uh, you can see fixed size, variable length array, the bounds, all in their type. For flexible array member, we just add the attribute uh, counted by. So the size in the uh, attribute. But pointer, yeah, there are quite some pointer arrays. Right now, there are no way to specify the size. So our, yeah, next, next, item is try to extend the counted by to general pointer. So there are two major ca cases. The first one is a pointer inside the structure. Yeah, as I, yeah, in that, yeah, small example. Yeah, so we can add a similar uh, attribute, same as the flexible array member. The second case is pointer passed as uh, function arguments. So, yeah, uh, the example shows it. And as uh, Sid just mentioned, it's 
the same. Yeah, currently this feature can be covered by uh, GCC current attribute access. So the access attribute did the same thing, just with a different name. So because it's already available, so our next fo focus will on the first case, the inside structure, pointer inside structure. For pointer pass as argument, we will not do it right now, yeah. So the next item will be re-implement attribute access and local size. Um, yeah, if you want to get more information, yeah, see the, the documentation for this two, uh, two attribute. So this two attribute will try to carry size information for the pointer as argument or a pointer as a returned value. So the access is try to to access uh, attribute, try to represent the size information for the pointer argument. And the alloc size attribute is try to carry the size information for the returned value of, from a function. So currently, yeah, they, they already available in GCC, but they have some problem. Yeah, you can see all this CR, this PR, the, this attribute information lost after IPA optimization, after the inline. So during the discussing of the counted by, we, we all, yeah, we all, yeah, agreed the new internal function access with size actually can be used to re-implement the access and local size attribute. Yeah, to carry the information in the IR and uh, survive the in line. So, I, does access with size have a location saying where this came from and use the source? Like, why? Uh, yeah. Do, do these access with size calls to the internal function carry with them where, um, where this came from? As in, did it come from a counted by? Uh, some particular line Not uh, or, or yeah. a um, uh, or an access. Um, yeah. Or uh, uh, so that's you. You asking whether the diagnostic later. Yeah. Will, I think this is in, if in the implementation we replace that one with uh, access ac uh, the access with size internal function. We might need to carry the location information. Uh, during the replacement. So the, yeah. uh, the user mm. knows why the compiler is mm. complaining about this access rather than just this access is bad. Yeah, I, I believe in the real implementation to use the access with size, re-implement re access and local size, uh, there will be some more detail we, we, we will figure out at that moment. Yeah, yeah, but uh, right now we think the access with size should cover um, the major issue, but there will be some minor issue, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the current uh, I fun uh, uh, internal function, uh, you can put the um, source code location on the function call. That's, that's easy, and you can, there, there is the minus one, zero, one, two uh, argument that, that can be extended as a bit mask uh. or something. But I, I would say uh, there is a problem with replacing the access attribute access with the attribute. access with size, because the thing is, uh, access with size is, is used on all the, all the references to the, uh, uh, to the, no, flexible array member, and the, the problem is that access uh, attribute doesn't mm. work like that. It's it's only about uh, the parameter. Parameter. Yeah, so, parameter. So the it's not all, uh, about all the uses of the parameter, but only about the value of the uh, parameter which was passed to the function. So, mm. and uh, another thing is that. Uh, but the it's po still the an association might, the with the pointer the might not be uh, addressable. Yeah, I, so I, I, I think, think we need yeah. a different internal function, perhaps similar, but uh, which which actually takes an SSA name rather than than a pointer to it, and you need to, to associate just the originally uh, 
default SSA name uh, in the function. So, mm -hmm. so only the value you, you, it was passed to the function because uh, you can do anything. Uh, the function point uh, function arguments are, mm -hmm. are like any other variables. You can change their values. You can assign them any, anything mm -hmm. else to them. And the access attribute doesn't apply at that, at that point anymore. It's only on the function boundary. So yeah, if, if you want to put it on the, if, through the inline functions, mm. then, then you need some internal function which, which will hold uh, the association that uh, this SSA name, mm. which originally was the default one, the uh, parents D one, uh, is associated with this SSA name, which, which is the value of the argument, uh -huh. but otherwise... <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can discuss after the meeting. Yeah, but that's... Three minutes uh, left. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So, so the Aris, yeah, the overflow detection will watch the clones experiment. Yeah, the case if I, I don't think I have enough time to explain the several slides. So maybe I just, uh, yeah, jump, yeah. So the control flow integrated yeah, is a security mechanism that yeah, I think most people might know. Yeah, if it's disallow the changes to the original control flow graph yeah, for a binary. So the case the CFI technology currently we have two different CFI. One is forward, one is backward. Forward means the forward jumping. Backward means the backward jumping, that's a return. There's a forward including the, all the other jump, branch, core, indirect core. Yeah, so there yeah, are reference to for more detail. And uh, so there are concept of the precision of the CFI. There's a coarse grain and the fine grain. Yeah, so coarse grain means the, all the function in the compiled program are allowed, and the, uh, also all the address taken are allowed. That's a coarse, coarse grain. The fine grain, yeah, will be finer. So with the same prototype, you can, yeah, the, the, the C, D, E, F, just uh, finer, finer, finer. Yeah, the C, C is all with the same prototype. D with the same prototype and address taken. E, yeah. Even even finer, only the derived class. That's for the C plus plus. Or if the the com compiler analysis more accurate, the point to the class hierarchy. Yeah, we can point to the exactly set. That's more accurate. So this is the 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 precision. Then yeah, I don't think I have time for this. So the current support uh, in GCC and the CLAN, the hardware support uh, all the core screen part. So GCC CLAN provide the x86 and the ARM64 support for the hardware instruction already. That's for the all the address taken function are allowed. And uh, the software support, the uh, fine green, and uh, this, this one actually requested uh, by Linux kernel for several years already. Yeah, Clan already supported, uh, provide two, two tools. One is Satellite CFI, and that has uh, some issue. So later, the other uh, KCFI, that's specifically for kernel, kernel purpose. So they request the KCFI implement in GCC for at least three years already. Yeah, but till now nothing provided uh, in GCC. Uh, so, so I raise this in GCC community, yeah. So a patch previously by Li Dan proposed um, last year, March, but that one has some discussion, but later gets dropped because then left. It, yeah. So then there's no progress on that project. But we, 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 we need this uh, project going on to provide uh, the KCFI for Linux kernel from GCC side. So yeah, I'm not sure whether, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. 
help can be get from the GTC community on this project. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Do I have time? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs>